Well, the news cycle has finally slowed down recently. It's been crazy over the past couple weeks. We had Trump almost getting assassinated. We had him picking his VP, all the news at the RNC. We had Biden dropping out. We had Kamala Harris stepping in and becoming the presumptive nominee. Endorsements happening and endorsements not happening. We had Kimberly Cheadle resign last week. It's been all sorts of crazy news. Anyway, we're going to slow down today, take a uh, deep dive into the Arizona Senate race between Carrie Lake and Ruben Gallego. I like to take deep dives of specific races across the country once in a while, so we're going to do that again today. Everyone says Carrie Lake can't win. I think just maybe she can. Let's see if that is the case today on Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. America is no longer one nation under God. Are you ready to fight for a revival? Well, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. So uh, today is not going to be a long episode. We're going to just take a brief look, a deeper dive, yes, than if I was just doing a Senate election prediction map across the country. It'll be deeper than that, but I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. Don't have a, you know, don't want to stretch this episode out too long. So I think the logical place to start is by looking at some polling. So we're going to consult <clears throat> RCP, Real Clear Polling, and the Hill and DDHQ's polling average. There's a couple notes here. So we'll start off with RCP. Uh, Ruben Gallego currently holds a 3.4 point lead over Kerry Lake in the average per them. This is the June 29th to July 23rd average. Uh, the most recent poll from the Hill and Emerson shows Gallego up four. And the reason I think that's the one to focus on here is because that's the only one that's come out so far that uh, we can really we should really pay attention to that has come out since Biden dropped out. Biden, as you know, was going to be dragging these dim senators and other candidates down on the ballot, whether that be a, a representative and you know Minnesota's fourth congressional district and dragging dragging Amy Klobuchar a few points, maybe Trump even wins Arizona or wins Minnesota. But uh, the point was Biden was dragging down these other candidates, and so it's gonna be very interesting to see if Kamala sort of has the same effect how well Kamala does in the polling compared to Trump if Kamala stays their nominee, which is not guaranteed. The convention hasn't happened yet. So I do want to focus specifically on the poll that shows uh, Harris. I think the wise thing to do is focus on that poll that uh, is since Trump and Harris became the presumed matchup. And that one from the Hill and Emerson, 800 registered voters, shows a 46-42 lead for Gallego. Interestingly, that is still, uh, that is only 88 points. It leaves 12% uh, percent of voters undecided. So Lake could certainly make up ground, um, especially if Trump does win Arizona by several points, which is looking like he's going to still maybe three or upwards points. Um, as far as uh, DDHQ and The Hill go, again, they have kind of the same sort of uh, conglomerate of polling. Uh, that one's a little bit different. They say Gallego has a 4.1% 4 lead based on 37 polls. RCP had 3.4 points for Gallego. Um, yeah, and that same Emerson College poll, which I cited just a second ago, 4-point lead for Gallego. Uh, Biden dropped out, I believe, on the 20th of July, 21st of July, I believe. I could be wrong about that, but right about then. In July 19th, 19th through 20th, public policy polling released a poll that had a seven-point lead for Gallego. So that um, that's not going to happen, obviously. It's not like that's actually going to happen. It's like that poll that came out showing Trump up, what was it, eight, 13 points, something crazy in Nevada like that. Polls that are that big of an outlier don't really need to be paid attention to, but it is interesting anyway, just to point it out. So, yeah, that's the, the way the polling goes. Uh, Lake has been sort of catching up a little bit. As of late, she was down, I believe, by as much as 13 points originally. Um, so she has been catching up some, making up some ground. This was before Biden dropped out. So, again, take it with a grain of salt. But Rasmussen, who's generally a pretty good poller, pollster, uh, did a week-long poll, July 5th through 12th, 1,101 likely voters. That's a big sample size. You like uh, looking at likelies rather than just registered voters. That's generally more accurate. Uh, only a 3% margin of error, and that showed a 44-41 uh, lead for Gallego, three-point lead. So that's very interesting as well. But again, um, the polls that are be conducted more and more after uh, Biden dropped out are probably going to be the most reliable, and we'll get more of those as time goes on. So I'm going to read from a couple articles here. This first one from Newsweek. Uh, this is from July 11th or an updated July 12th. So this is a little bit of an older one. Uh, so I want to start with this. That's Carrie Lake gets good news in Arizona Senate race, just to show you that this isn't all gloom and doom. 
Uh, so this is a couple weeks ago. Controversial Senate candidate Carrie Lake, they say, has p- closed a polling gap in Arizona where she previously trailed by 13 points to progressive Democrat Ruben Gallego. The latest poll by Remington Research Group, conducted for conservative news site The Daily Wire, show that Lake and Gallego are neck and neck on 47% each ahead of November's election. This new poll, Remington's first for the 2024 Arizona Senate race, suggests a market, remarkable turnaround for Lake, who has trailed Gallego in every state poll since February, including one in May where she was 13 points adrift. Honestly, that was probably one of those polls that you can just discard. She ain't losing by 13 points, I'm just saying. Uh, the new poll, which surveyed 638 likelies in Arizona between June, June 29th and July 1st, was backed by a partisan Republican sponsor, but Remington is a reputable pollster with National Polling Aggregator 538 ranking at 28th out of 277 polling firms for its historical track record and transparent methodology. Although she has consistently trailed in the polls, Lake's campaign hopes have been recently reignited as she begins to close began to close Gallego's six-month lead. He led by only one point in a June poll conducted by North Star Opinion Research. And the thing is, everyone says that um, Carrie Lake is a super unlikable candidate. I'm trying to type and talk at the same time. But that's just not the case, I don't think. Everyone says she's super unlikable and super controversial. She's a little bit controversial, maybe? But the fact is, she want, she barely lost in 2022, her governor's election. Katie Hobbs, the Secretary of State at the time, uh, beat her 50.3 to 49.6%. It was a difference of 17,000 votes in a race where over about, what is that, uh, 2.5 million were cast, I believe. So, I mean, that's a lot of votes. And she lost by only 17,000. That was an extremely close race. So, I don't see why everyone's acting like this. She's just the worst candidate Republicans could have put up and and she has no chance. That's obviously not the case, especially now with Trump being on the ticket. If he does win Arizona, and then if she only lost for the governorship by 0.6 points, presumably you'd think if Trump wins Arizona by three or four, he could help pull her up a little bit. That may not happen. He may not win by that much. He may not win Arizona at all, though I think he's going to. And even if he does, he may not pull her up. But I think there's a very good chance of that happening. Again, not saying it's going to, but it's certainly possible. Uh, this article from Arizona Capital Times reporting on the financial side of things. Gallego continues to far outraise, outspend Lake for Senate. Not a big surprise there. Democrat Ruben Gallego once again far outpaced Republican frontrunner and Carrie Lake, Carrie Lake in the U.S. Senate race, according to the latest campaign finance reports. Uh, of course, Carrie Lake, they say that, um, because she is not the Republican nominee yet. She's taking on Mark Lamb, who is a sheriff in the state, and one other a newer scientist, I think it was. I can't remember her name. But, um, yeah, they're taking on each other, I believe, this yeah this Tuesday, um, July 30th. So that'd be tomorrow by the time this comes out. Uh, that'd be tomorrow evening. Carrie Lake is expected to walk away with the nomination. Uh, Gallego, currently a member of Congress, continues to keep a hearty lead, raising more in the last quarter than Lake has raised cumulatively over the er- entire election cycle. Most recent numbers reinforce most people's view of the race. Chuck Coughlin, consultant with High Ground Public Affairs, said Lake is trailing him badly in her ability to get her message out, and then underlying that is the ability of Lake's message to actually reach parts of the electorate she's going to need. I don't think there's any fundamental change in, the, in that race. It is what it is. Gallego raised $10.4 million to Lake's $4.3 million. The latest quarterly report shows both Lake and Gallego nearly breaking even, however. Lake spent $4.04 million from April to June, leaving her with about two point eight on hand and a little more than $812,000 owed in debts. Lake ended the last quarter with $2.5 million. Gallego, meanwhile, outspent his contributions and ended the period with $9.2 million cash on hand, down from $9.6 million at the end of the first quarter. <clears throat> so obviously she's being, again, vastly outraised and outspent. Not a surprise, Republicans are always outraised and outspent. The Democrats just, first of all, they've got bigger donors on the side. They have, you know, their their national uh, national committee usually runs a much better, uh, much tighter ship than the Republican national campaigns do. Again, they have bigger donors. Their their smaller donors are m- more willing to donate to them. So that's just the way it goes. But that may be beginning to change. Both of them are spending it as quickly as they're getting it. But the big thing is that Ruben is sitting on four times the amount of cash. Mike Noble, founder of Noble Predictive Insights, said. Noble noted want fundraising is one key factor in campaign success, particularly in Senate races. Unlike legislative district races, where you have whatever thousand voters coming out, you're taking millions of peop- talking millions of people, Noble said. 
if you can put out more tonnage than the other person, it's a big advantage. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, Gallego continues to outpace Lake in fundraising efforts throughout the election, bringing in more than $31 million total compared to Lake's $10 million. Lake's primary opponent, Mark Land, that's about primary stuff. We don't care about that. Um, Stan Barnes, consultant with Copper State Consulting, said cash continues to be the greatest single indicator of a certain popularity, though he noted money is not exactly determinative in elections. Barnes said the next quarter will bring the true influx of raising and spending, given the urgency as the election grows nearer. How funds flow from national party outfits in, le in the lead-up to the general election will also serve as an indicator of Lake's momentum, Barnes said. It's all about the political marketplace of believing Lake can beat Gallego in this environment and East Coast money, which is where the real money is, either comes in or doesn't come in based on their perception, Barnes said. They won't waste money in Arizona if they don't think Kerry can win. And that's the case. Um, it really is. Again, does the polling, does their internal polling... Does the momentum and does Trump's polling seem to indicate to them that Carrie Lake can win this race? She's going to have to have national money to do it. Um, I know Carrie Lake has kind of waned in popularity with some conservatives even. She, she, she's obviously not super popular with the uh, real establishment side of the party either. But at the same time, I don't think she's an incredibly bad candidate by any stretch of the imagination. And I do believe she can come out on top in the Senate race. Right now, I think the smart money is still on uh, Gallego. Right now, I still say he has a two to three point win, but that can certainly change. We've still got, uh, I think, all of August, September, October, a little bit of July, a little bit of November. So call it three and a half months. We've still got, that's time for her to turn around, but she's going to have to have money to do it. So we'll see if she can do that, and we'll see if she can pull this, close this polling gap, and we'll see how Trump does against Harris as well. My next video, I've done a lot of presidential prediction maps, and uh I hope people aren't getting bored of those, but the situation in the race keeps changing, so that probably is going to be my next video, aside from all the YouTube shorts. So make sure you stay subscribed for more uh, conservative analysis and the most conservative commentary online. In the words of our great president, look here, Jack. I'll challenge you to push-ups, but that's neither here nor there. Don't forget to subscribe to the Fight and Revive YouTube channel and help us reach more people with our conservative message.